Hey guys, it's August, and welcome back to Pyre. Sorry it's been a little while since the last video, I've been pretty busy lately, and we're also going up to Christmas, which is a bit of its own sort of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a bit of time to myself tonight, so I figured I would record some more. And last time, we actually set Hedwin free. We completed the Liberation Rite, and he has gone back to the Commonwealth. So our... Basically, de facto leader is gone, so it's just the rest of us, and it's time to do the rights once again and get somebody else out of here. So I have a couple of things I want to talk about before we get started today. Some of them are like theories I've been thinking of, <laughs> of course, and there's also something about the LP itself I wanted to talk about. So I'll do that first, and if you guys want to skip this and go straight to the video, just go to whatever time's on the screen right here. So the first thing is I do want to talk about the LP structure, because... Like I mentioned last time, I'm not really sure how the rest of the game is going to progress from now on. There is a chance that we're just gonna, you know, do fight after fight after fight, and there might not be too much story stuff going on, and if that's the case, then I feel like it might be kind of repetitive. So, we'll see how it goes. For now, I'm just gonna keep going on like normal, but if it does get to a point where there's lots of fights in a row, then I might end up cutting them, or... Like, I don't know, maybe just making really long videos, we can just skip to the story parts if you want. So, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. The first kind of arc of the game is really good about the story, so hopefully the rest of it will be as well. Anyway, on to theories. <laughs> so, I've been thinking about how many times we will actually have to go through this Liberation Rise. Because we have a total of eight party members, right? Uh, we have a total of seven, actually. So we had Hedwin, now we have Jody, and the rest too. Because you need three people to do a rise, it means that in the end, won't two of our party members be stuck in the downside with us because we can't escape because we're the reader, which means that out of all our party members, two of them aren't going to be able to leave. Like, I think that's the case. Which means that we would have to go through the Liberation Rite five times. So... That's the thing, like, 5 is a pretty typical number for gameplay, it's either like 3 or 5, and so maybe we will go through it 5 times, 5 of our party members get to escape, and 2 of them will be stuck here. So that's kind of sad thinking about it, especially because we've all, like, dedicated to get ourselves back to the Commonwealth together. And like, I mean, maybe there is a way in the end where all of us get to go home free, but I don't really see how that's possible, considering they need 3 people to do the right, so... Yeah, that's one thing I thought of, and I'm not really sure how we're going to be able to handle that. At least the next couple of runs should be easy, but towards the end, especially the last one, is going to be pretty rough, I think. And the other thing I thought of is the fact that when we looked at the other parties on the world map, some of them had a win-loss ratio next to them, which makes me think that if you lose enough matches, you probably won't be able to participate in the Liberation Rite, which means that another team will be able to get back to the Commonwealth instead. Which would be really, really interesting, because I have a feeling that probably the final like battle of the game is going to be back in the Commonwealth, and I reckon that any other teams that get to escape, you'll have to go up against. Which is going to be really, really cool, actually. So it's kind of like, if you fail throughout the game, then the final mission becomes way more difficult. And if none of the other teams get to escape, then it's probably really, really easy. So, like, this is all just theory, of course. I don't actually know anything about the end of the game. But if that's the case, that would be pretty interesting, for sure. Anyway, that's enough theory, let's talk to Sir Gilman, who has something on his mind. Sir Gilman is shivering there after the Black Wagon's made it voyage through the skies. M Master Reader, this knight is very, very slightly out of sorts is all. He merely appears terrified, but he assures you that his seemingly cowardice is an optical illusion in this case. Pavitha overhears and joins you. Flying's not for everyone, Sir Knight. This knight heartily concurs, though how anyone at all can stand it, he is yet to understand. Well, let's see. What's it like to swim in the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah, those glorious murky waters engulfed in the hideous warfare, to be sure. But otherwise a joy to cut across to feel the coolness of the waves below one's gill slits and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to his life among the surface. Flying just the same, sir knight. It resists those of us not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seas are like. The thought of swimming fills me with disgust. 
Though I haven't had to swim, and now you have to fly. That's very brave of you, and you handled it better than some hot pledge I've made in my day. You'll get used to it. She departs, but you said Sir Gilbert is feeling better after the exchange. Ah, he has one plus hope. Let's wish him well. I will say, this sort of storytelling, hey Trophy, this sort of storytelling is really, really interesting because Famitha joined our team relatively late in the first run. She only joined out of nowhere, I thought, but the fact that we do get to go through the game probably five times and, you know, all the characters get to talk to each other, I think is really, really cool. And it also adds, like, a pretty interesting level of replay value because you can go through the game, li like, liberating different characters and seeing how the others interact with each other. Because, yeah, thinking about it, Hedwin's gone. We're not going to see any more of him until probably the end of the game. So, yeah. Anyway, what the hell do we have around here now? We have Waking Wood Wisps. The wisps inside provide a scarce bit of light when it is needed. All for the sake of a low monthly fee. What? Uh, we have our flying stuff up here. We have some more flying stuff up here. Oh, hi, Jody. Uh, what else do we have around here? We have this little... I saw a stone before, but it's kind of gone somewhere now. Oh, canvas wings, there you go. The black wagon is flight capable, though by which means you do not fully grasp as yet. A keepsake from Moonlight Alcove. And let's check the Book of Rights. Holy shit! Okay. Um. <laughs> so, I kind of expected that we might have chapter 2, not friggin' 5 new chapters. So first of all, we have the Empress Fall from Golgothanian. Now we have from Jimmy and Minnie Maid. We also have from um, Molten Myth, the Wild Witch. Interesting how we don't have a witch in our team yet. Big Bertrude, maybe. Although I suppose that means we have to go through the Liberation Rite six times if she just joined. Although hell, maybe. Who knows? I'll lose gold again. The scholar. Who else do we have? Ooh, hey, Uber, the swallow, the accursed imp. And. Our Triesta. But who are these two? We're missing a demon. And. We're missing the, um. Uh. Gilman's race. Oh, uh, man, what's. What are they called? Wow, I. I'm drawing up a blank here. <laughs> Worms, that's it, the sea worms, the city minion. Alright, so I guess we have a bit of lore story here. Hey, and here I was saying that, I was worried that there wouldn't be too much story. Alright, in the words of Jimmy Minimay, the Alpha Chief. Once I too roamed free, I remember well those days in which I was called Chief. I travelled all the world over on my four good paws and I was well adorned. I wanted to grow stronger, here at last I have. I shall not miss words, this place shall... Either harden you or kill you, it shall haunt you with your old memories. You share the exile's plight. My charge is to alleviate the sting of you for a little bit, and to prolong your stay, but only for as long as you're needed. Your charge is to return. We call the place the downside for a reason, but in time you can learn to eat, to seek our shelter, and to find a certain beauty in unlikely places. Huh. Jameer is a lot more poetic than I expected. Also interesting, so each of these guys are leaving words to the reader. So the witch here, gaining the summit of the sacred Mount Alodil involved- oh wait a second. Uh... Ooh, okay, so she's several chapters already. He only has one though, what about the rest? Looks like there's a couple here too. Interesting, why is something multi? Oh, okay. We have a lot of reading here, so once again, if you guys want to go ahead, then... Okay. A uh, years upon long years, we spent distilling life, essence from many things, which all once ride under the auspice of their mortality, which we, al which we ourselves cut short. In this, we have no regrets, for we learned much, and so we think did they. We earned the title witch, and were forced to flee into the downside here. We encountered solemn myrrh, and soon we gained an understanding of each other. He bade us... Circumnavigate? Circumnavigate. These lands and catalog our foundings. We felt a strong desire to expose the secrets of this land. He wished to yield benefit to those who followed in our wake. Indulge us both then. 
Beyond a shallow sickly gulf, our voyage grew increasingly forbidden and much harder to explain. How could a sea exist here at the bottom of the world? That's interesting. We could not deduce whence sprang the carcasses of ancient sailing ships we found throughout the Sea of Solace. Though the warnings that they signified we duly noted, it was here that we first met Ores, called the Underking, who brazenly assaulted our small skiff, for we had trespassed in his waters, but then the Underking relented, for he witnessed Solomon Murr and all his doom and glory. Soon he would side with us. Then with the Underking we sailed forth into a tempest beyond reasoning or measure. Gaining the summit of the sac sacred Mount Alodil involved no small amount of sacrifice and sorcery in varying proportion. The mountain's energies were palpable, the sensation that we felt undescribable. The lands we stood upon were closer to the stars than to the world we knew. It was upon this highest point and all the downside that we first made efforts to concoct this tome, which you now read. It was there that we were stricken with a vision of the cycle of the rites and felt together for the first a sense of freedom unlike any we had experienced before. But that is a subject which our comrades shall illuminate in greater detail. Very, very interesting. Also interesting to note how the pages ended, like right after this one, you jump right into this. And you even skip a bunch of pages here. So it's almost like we're getting random bits of the Book of Rights unlocked at a time, which is really, really interesting. Let's have a look at this dude. Uh, this is going to take a while. I'm already up to friggin' like 10 minutes on my recording. <laughs> this is definitely the lore episode. Uh, do you feel a kinship with the stars? You owe yourself everything to them, perhaps one day even your freedom. I chased the stars across the river of my genealogy until they led me here. I demanded they explain to me the paradox of knowledge for how it is that something can be shared but still contained within ourselves in its entirety. The stars did not respond but set me on a quest. I sought the nine landmarks which they revealed to me so that someday I would reveal the mysteries to you. These landmarks, emissaries of the stars, are nine lenses through which we see the land and see ourselves in a new light. Yeah, this is definitely like a huge lore dump. I might need to go through this again on my own time, just kind of digest a bit of it. Um, much can be said about the Sisters of the Arch, who we banished to the great beyond for deeds irredeemable. Suffice it that the details of their banishment are written in this book, the sisters and the book became inseparable. Not unlike the stars, their light and the infinite darkness that engulfs them. So I wonder if those sisters are talking about are the witches from the previous chapter. The stars communicate to us and you in turn. The words within this book are but an edifice, a simple surface, look past the text to the hidden meaning to the hidden power. The stars above, as they are not mere lights, these are not mere words. If you chance upon the sisters of the arch within the prison here, give them our thanks. Oh, so wait a second, maybe he means like Xandra. What about... This imp... Actually, I didn't even expect him to be able to write. <laughs> Unless he's like reciting the words to Golgothania, maybe. At first I found it too much difficult to read. Oh no, he's actually totally reading. Um, but much less to write, even to grasp the quill. But the horned one Mur implored me. He said this is the greatest gift that he could give me in return. In return for what, I asked. In return for his life, he said. But I do not wish to save your life. I said, you did, he said. We fight about this still. Mur is stubborn more than I. Now herein, and by his leave, I chronicle the nine triumphants. For I am of this land, unlike the rest who wish to leave. We knew not everyone could leave who wanted, seldom would the opportunity arise. Thus we did organize those striving for the chance in the ninth sets of three. Interesting, okay. And what about her? We the eight assembled here together in the downside, and we gave our freedom so that you may yet have yours. It is an exchange we have not lightly made. It is my charge to ensure that you shall regain your freedom, first off recognize its qualities and also use it wisely. You do not need a pair of wings in order to be free, my own wings I once thought that they could take me anywhere, and then they took me here where I am bound. It is the charge to be free and not to make the same mistakes, spring from here and learn what we did and build the new and great society, a free society with wings spread wide for everyone. That sounds very, very similar to what Sander would want to do too. And damn, that was a lot of reading. Um, yeah, I suppose 
like I said, I'll have to go through that on my own time and just kind of get a good understanding of it because it seems like each of the scribes are talking about their own little story and yeah, I think we'll be unlocking more of that as we go along, which is kind of cool. Anyway, um, yeah, I suppose, Sandra? Anything new? Uh, nope. Nothing, yes. Alright, I'll see you next time, Sandra. But for now, we have a right to attend to. You spent a quiet afternoon in the boundless waters of the Ragged Rock, surveying the area of some of your companions. Oh, what is he? He's witnessed nothing. Yields nothing and no. The three of you return to the wagon for the remainder of the day. We shall have time to pursue your vocations. Okay. Uh, after doing this a couple of times, I kind of like studying in private, actually. Leveling up the stats of all your characters is really, really nice. And we have hope or presence. Let's get presence this time around. But I can definitely see myself focusing on this for the remainder of the game. At least until we get it done. Alright, cool. And it should be time to head down to our right. And if I remember right, I think we're facing off against Lendl. Yes, there he is. Now, this is a very interesting dude who we met once and didn't know anything about. Although he seemed to know us. So let's see what he says the second time around. Especially when Hedman's not even here. Oh, we already have more. Really? <laughs> I'll hyper meet that. I'll talk to you, but... I think what I'll do is... I'll play the game for a bit, and then we'll read the book in large chunks. Because I feel like every time we go to a place now, it's going to bring up new text from the different scribes. So we'll... We'll come to that when we come to that. Also, hi, Rock. Exhibits of... Flagrant disregard for natural law, thus providing light entertainment. I can appreciate that. What's up, Pamitha? You find Pamitha by herself again, though her expression is grown darker than accustomed. Leave me be, would you, Rita, darling? Trying to get some good and proper moping done here, and you're distracting me. Whoa. Something about her thought process is different to you now. Wait a second, we can read her thoughts? Ooh. Ah, oh, you know what? Sandalwood can do that, and he's a reader as well, so maybe we're picking up from him. You know that with her conditioning, she can resist your scrutiny, but now her thoughts are laid bare to you. Mithra is alone with her thoughts. Ah. I want to know, but I feel like that would be invading her privacy, so you know what? I'll leave her be. She can talk to me when she's ready. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. And Pamitha totally knows it as well. <laughs> Thoughts are lonesome things, Rita. It is difficult to know how best to hide them. Mine are plain enough for you to see by now. Interesting. So wait a second. Pamitha actually knows that readers have this ability? I mean, we don't, but I guess we're kind of like new to the whole reading business. You could say I lack Demetha's sense of commitment, her zeal, her zeal rather. She lives only to see your nation overthrown, or something worse if she could have a way. Centuries of conflict can be quite emboldening that way, especially when one sister's leading cause of death is Commonwealth Forged Steel. Wielded with the utmost of mercy, of course. Well, I had little patience for the selflessness of it myself. It became a bit of a prior, I suppose. I knew Timitha was going to get herself and the others killed some day, so when she was to fly out on this one big mission of hers, I had other regions made. But after she was caught, your people did not exactly uphold their end of the bargain. I knew there was risk, of course, and yet a chance is still a chance. Timitha was clipped and cast down, a mercy they called it. I did not see it that way, and in my growing protest of her treatment, I was soon enough to follow. Oh, okay, so... Basically, she gave up her sister, I guess, man, maybe her, ooh. I'm just thinking here, like, giving a sister up to the Commonwealth, like, wouldn't that kind of imply that a sister would be killed? So, I don't know, for me, that's kind of rough, but maybe there's something else here. I haven't decided yet if I entirely regret my actions, but I do seek to meet this forgiveness and wish that she could see my thoughts for what they are, as it seems you can. <laughs> yes, Pamitha totally knows about that. 
<laughs> she brushes past you and out of the wagon for now. And we have learned a little bit of her past. Let's have a look. Ooh, okay. So her crime is conspiracy. She made repeated attempts to make contact with the enemy combatants taken into custody. Okay. As mercy guides our hand, we spare your life. We rid ourselves of you from the sentencing ceremony. And her motive is insurrection. She remained loyal to the Highwing Remnant despite claims to contrary. In the downside, one's past tends not to be a subject for discussion. Hamitha was exiled four years ago, okay. And it's a life sentence too. Unless we can get liberated. 